You know what, man? Before we get out of here, let me, I'm, I'm going to ask you something totally absent of what we're talking about. Um, this year, hip-hop is turning 50, right? When people mention hip-hop, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Anything. Struggle. Mm. Like, it's, it, it's, it's the sound of the struggle. It's the black experience. Like that's that's what it is. It's, it's the music of the it's the soundtrack of the black experience. Mm. You know, it's it, it's our version of the blues. Facts. That's that's the best way that I could like sum it up in short form. Mm. It's the sound of the struggle. I agree, man. I agree. I, I what I, what I wanted wanted to do is ask everybody to come on the podcast this year. Um, just to give a hip hop thought, and I know you're a big fan. Um, you and I like some of the same music. Uh, you grew up on some of the same music that I grew up on, even though you know of our age difference. Um, I was heavily influenced, and people have heard this, me say this before. Heavily influenced by you know Easy and NWA uh, coming out of South Carolina. Myself, um, you were right there. So um, you know, it's always always good to get the perspective of. You know, people. <laughs> oh, that's the life size poster right there. That's mm-hmm. dope. Yeah, man. That's I, dope. I got a picture Easy E in my house. Man, listen, we love that dude, man. We loved. I mean, like, I don't even know how. It's funny because like my boy put me on to him, and I don't even know how he got the Easy E tape. I really don't because like we always got West Coast music before we got East Coast music, which didn't make a lot of sense, but we did. And um, he found the, he found the easy easy e tape. He dubbed it for me, and I got hooked on it, and was hooked there ever since. I mean, like I listened to West Coast rap, but at the time, you know, we're talking like eighty seven, eighty eight. It was only a handful of people, like King T. Um, it was pretty much King T seven eight three, but they weren't like gangster, you know. Well, King T was, but Easy E introduced us to like something that we had never heard before something we never seen before and <laughs> we believed everything he said <laughs> i mean he talked about gang i we didn't know what the fuck a gang was i mean i was in what eighth grade I, I couldn't spell gang so i mean like there were no gangs in south carolina so you know everything he every person he shot we thought he did so like he was this mythical figure and then like once we were able to kind of contextualize and you know they brought in nwa man i was just hooked and um, that just started me on something as far as West Coast uh, music. Probably that, you know, I probably stuck with to this day. I think it was the sound that we had was more acceptable to the South. Mm-hmm. Like the way that the South make their music, the sound of it's melodic. Very much like so. it's, you know, it's that bounce. It's some shit you can listen to. It's something that you want to hear in a party or when you in your car. The East Coast, it's all lyrics. It's headphone music. Like, you never really hear a motherfucker like, you know, you got some girls at the house and you like, hey, man, put that Nas on. You don't want that no fucking Nas. Like, <laughs> no. You gonna put on some West Coast shit or some down South shit because we got that box. You mm-hmm. know, even some, some Midwestern shit because the West Coast sound is from Ohio. Facts. You know, we, we get our sound from the funk. You know, Facts. Ohio players. Like, that's, mm-hmm. that's our sound. Zap. You know, yeah, we, we get that shit from, from Dayton. Dayton. You know, so the way that our shit sound, it's already from that, you know, from the Midwest, the South, because, you know, Ohio, them niggas right there on the line and shit. Mm-hmm. You know, so we, we already got that, that bounce. So as far as the East Coast go, respect to them niggas and all they lyrics and <clears> them <throat> literally creating this shit. The reason that our shit moved easier towards y'all is because you know that's that's the shit you want to hear that's the shit you can bounce to that's what you rather have playing in your car mm-hmm. you don't have no nigga riding up the street with the blueprint bumping through no money <laughs> you know i consider that to be one of the greatest hip-hop albums of all time but oh, no question are you really listening to that shit loud blasting out the out nah. your windows in your car Nah, you ain't putting that on. You got a girl in your living room. Hell no. 
And you know, it's funny, man. I one last question on hip hop. Um, an album that I, I I love just turned five years old a couple of days ago at, at the time of this recording, a uh, victory lap. Um, and it's kind of crazy, man, because it's like the thing came across my timeline. I'm like, damn, it's five, it's been five, it doesn't feel like it's been five years. Victory lap by Nipsey Hussle, a guy that you know I caught on to late, but I was glad that I did catch him because, like, when I was able to, <laughs> he got more pictures. That's what's up. Um, what, what did you think about that album, man? Just your overall thoughts on the album turning five years old and 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 the legendary late great Nipsey Hussle. Man, it's 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 crazy to think that that shit is five years old. It don't feel like it's been that long, dog. Nah, nah, not at all. Like literally, I'm like five fucking years, my nigga. Just thinking about him being gone the way he went, it, it really fucked me up. But the, mm-hmm. the album, I was I was happy that he did the way he did. It's crazy that it was named Victory Lap because Victory Lap is something that is final. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like eerie a little bit that he titled it that. But at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm glad he his last album was a motherfucking banger. Man, listen, you know, like that motherfucker is. And something that I say about hip hop albums, and this is just something that I came up with, like me and John was talking about it yesterday on the phone. You can't call an album a classic until 10 years. Mm, but being nice. that we five years out. And everything on that motherfucker is still standing in the test of time. I'm, it's, it's pretty safe to say that's that's a classic album. Listen, I was I was banging it uh, the day two days ago, and it's like you play it and you you really forget how much like how bad the shit was. And like I'm the the way that I measure albums is like the more and more you listen to it, and then you get away from it, and then you come back to it, you hear shit that you hadn't heard before, and. I remember, man, one day, this is about maybe about two months ago, um, I clicked on an interview on YouTube. And, you know, YouTube's a fucking rabbit hole. And it was an interview that I'd never seen before. It was only like a three-minute clip of Nipsey talking about, you know, investing in his neighborhood or whatever. And I ended up spending like an hour just watching Nipsey Hussle videos. Not, and not, it went from the music videos to, you know, his videos just talking about himself and being interviewed by people or whatever like that, man. And it's like, like you said, it's, it's kind of eerie, almost like how Biggie, you know, named his album life after death. And we understand how the, the themes were. And I understand, you know, coming from where he came from and how he, why he would name it victory lap. But man, you listen to that album, that album is like an hour, 15 minutes, whatever. It doesn't feel like that, but man, I just got in the car and was just riding, man. And it's just like, it banger after banger after banger, man. I, I got um probably my favorite song on there is Dedication, Kendrick Lamar. Um, but I mean it's, it's funny, man, because when I first got on the album, it flip flopped. Like one day it might be Blue Laces, then the next day it might be Victory Lap, the title track. So, what, what's your favorite joint on the album? Um, I don't even know honestly, because like. Listening to that album still give me like misty eyed. Okay, shit. okay, understood. When understood. I first heard the album, it was last time that I checked. <sighs> Come on, man! But I, <laughs> I, I literally, I, I literally can't listen to the song without like it. It, it fucked me up every single time. Like once, yeah. every, every time I hear the cash register down in the beginning, I just yeah skip because I'm gonna start crying. Wow! So like um. Yeah, probably last time that I checked. Okay. But for for a minute, um, damn the the song with Stacy Barth, <laughs> Victory Lap. Yeah, like, cause I'm like, was that song called Victory Lap? It was. Mm-hmm. That that was my ringtone for like three years. Wow. Like, you know, just the way that nigga start that shit. I'm prolific, so gifted. gifted. I was like, you yeah, know. This this my favorite song. I love when he says circle got small, everybody can't go. Shit, man. That 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 described me all all day. Cause as you get bigger and you move on in life, your circle is gonna get smaller. Yeah. That shit is, you know, and, and again, like I've been a Nipsey fan since the first bullets mixed up. Wow. wow, you go way back. 
Yeah, like said, like oh eight, something like that. Like mm-hmm. you know, so shit. I, I I seen the the evolution. Right. Because on some real shit, I remember when the marathon dropped, I didn't even like it. Really? I hated that shit. Mm -hmm. Like, it took me probably like a month of like really just trying to like wrap my head around the fact that this nigga wasn't on gangbanger time no more. Mm -hmm. Because I like Crip Nipsey. Mm -hmm. Like, the Bullets Ain't Got No Name series, nigga, that was gangbanger soundtrack. Like, nigga, this, this music we cripping to. Mm-hmm. Like nigga, this this is get your head bust music. Like, <laughs> you know, I, I was fucking with hustle in the house, and mm-hmm. you know, fucking with little Boosie, and you know, we gang banging with glasses Malone and and J Rock. Like that was the Nipsey that I was enjoying. Like you know, the the one take freestyles and shit. But then when he went to the marathon, he kind of like grew up. Mm-hmm. You know, like the song uh, "Love," which I love now. Right, because that was the song when he said, "You know, it's like the less I come around, the more I'm getting money." Like, I was like, "Okay, now, now, now I see that where he's going." Yeah. I didn't yeah. want to hear lyrical Nipsey. You know, this nigga was like, uh, "What he say?" Like, I'm a gang bang graduate. Uh, master transition from this cripping wasn't easy, but I mastered it. It was some shit like that, and I'm like, "Damn!" He like, you know, so I still deliver rap so passionate. Um. Like it, 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 like this nigga rapping his ass off, and it was. it was tight. But I'm like, where the gang banging shit? At? <laughs> like I, I don't think I want to hear this shit from you, right. nigga. Like I get back to the cripping. Mm-hmm. But it's like you know, as I got older, and you know, like my my ear matured a little bit more to it. I'm like, okay, now nah, this this shit way better. Like mm-hmm. because I still listen to that album. Like the marathon is. Shit, I like the marathon more than I like Victory Lap. Really? Okay, that's what's up. You know, even like TMC, mm-hmm. um, shit, Extra Laps, Crenshaw. I love Crenshaw. I you was know, like, that the other day too. Because I was telling motherfuckers, like, the, when Nipsey died, I missed the episode. Like, the day that Nipsey died, we was recording. Mm-hmm. So, and literally, we in LA. When Nipsey got killed, I probably was eight nine blocks away wow like i was right around the fucking corner recording cat versus dog podcast we finished recording so as we you know like getting everything ready my co-host leaving i'm getting ready to do too much game i'm going over my notes and Mm -hmm. watching the news and it's like oh it was a it was a shooting at the marathon store and the first thing i thought i said boy nip gonna be pissed off because they ain't supposed to have no guns down there Mm -hmm. that was the first thing i told the producer like nigga they that's like a no gun zone. Like Nipsey makes sure they don't have no no guns over there because he got felons working there and he don't want to fuck that shit up. So you can't right. even have guns around that motherfucker. He going to be pissed off when he get down there. I ain't even knowing he the victim and shit. Mm-hmm. Like, and then, you know, me and the homie or me and my producer being ready, we sitting there talking to shit and somebody called being ready phone. They like, Nip got hit. This before the news even mentioned the shit. Wow. He like, he out of here, dog. And he like, what? He like, that nigga laid out, nigga. That nigga brains on the floor. And I'm like, man, you bullshitting. You know, so the, you know, he you he telling me, he on the phone and he like, nigga said Nipsey got killed. I'm like, you fuck, you, you, you bullshitting, my nigga. That must be somebody that look like that nigga or something. <laughs> right. So, you know, the news is going and, you know, me and this nigga, we sitting here talking and we hoping that the nigga on the phone is just like, Lying. You know, he don't know no better or something. Mm-hmm. He just he's some tall, light skinned nigga that got hit and he just think it's nip. But you know, when the news announced it, like I'm just like, man, fuck this show. Mm-hmm. You know, like I had a whole episode written and ready. I'm not fucking finna record this shit. Like I'm I'm over here with fucking tears in my eyes. Right. You know, like me and being ready, we went, you know, stood outside and it just was quiet. Like literally, like the only thing you can hear is planes flying overhead. Like mm. That shit was, it was eerie as fuck. Like, it just, like that whole day, like I, I remember driving home and listening to Blue Laces and I had to pull over because I was crying. Like I, I couldn't even see the freeway. Like I like pulled the car over on the freeway and cried for like 20 minutes. Like, wow, this nigga gone, dog. Like, like LA on bullshit right now. 
And I like, you know, like I came in the next week, like and just I heard that episode. I heard that episode. I went back and listened to that one. That was it was a man, that was a really that was a really good episode. I mean, all your episodes are good, but that one you could tell, like, and that that was I think that was the first one that I went back and heard like some of your earth because I think you was young Dolomite then. You wasn't even Uncle Dolomite. Yeah, no, I was and still young um Dolomite. Yeah, y'all just y'all just y'all went off for of maybe about an hour, hour twenty, and y'all was just spitting real. I mean, it, it, and I think I went back because I was listening to this. And I was like, you know, so I never heard like because I came onto your podcast so late. Well, not late, but I mean, like I just you know we were formally introduced. I was like, let me go back and hear what it sounded and what it felt like when it happened because, you know, obviously being in Atlanta, you know, we got a different take, and I just remember, you know, I when Victory Lab came out. Cause I had heard her, I heard a Nipsey and I heard, I actually heard him rap before. I was like, okay, this dude, he all right. And then I heard that, you know, when the Crenshaw tape came out, the Jay-Z bought like a hundred copies. I was like, what the fuck would Jay-Z buy a hundred copies of some dude raps? And I was like, you know, let me go listen to him. So I pulled up a little stream or whatever like that. And I started listening. I was like, uh, typical LA dude. I started listening first. And then I started hearing the music. I was like, like you said, it's melodic. It's got that bop. I was like, okay. Then I started listening to him. I'm like, Oh no, he can rap. Like he ain't fucking around. He ain't just on some gang shit. And then I heard the Crenshaw tape and I listened to it and kept listening. I was like, oh, this shit is nice. Then I started going back and listening to, you know, the mailbox money, all those other, you know, mixtapes and stuff. I was like, man, this dude is, and you like you said, you you could hear and see the growth from where he was to where he became. And then, you know, I remember being on Twitter and Somebody said something about somebody getting shot, and I was like, and I try. I, I'm one of those people like, I try to stay away from the 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 police brutality videos and what I call murder porn. And I remember somebody had posted a link on a video, and it was the point where Twitter, the videos would come up whether or not you clicked on the video or not. And there was some, there was a video, it was a grainy video, like I guess like a TMZ video, and it shows somebody two people standing outside. And before the video started playing, I, I turned it off. I didn't know what it was, but I was like, this this looked like some shit. So, and what it was, was it was actually, I guess, the TMZ footage from the encounter, whatever, before he got murdered. And so I never saw it. And I never went back to see it because I, I, I don't like I don't like having those images in my head. Right. The triggering police shit triggering to me. Um, but I was bothered by the fact that, you know, one, that this was circulating because, like you said, at that particular time, I don't even think the news, it, I don't think it hit the news yet. But, you know, shit flies fast on Twitter, you know, because everybody got cell phones. And so when the word came out that that was him, I was like, man, are you fucking kidding me? Like, who would want to do this? Like, you know, and then it just, I didn't realize, I think, his influence and power until I knew he was big out there. I mean, I knew that. I don't know if I knew how big he was until after he passed. Like, you don't get, you know, your memorial service at the Staples Center. They don't they do not do that for everybody. I mean, Nipsey and Michael Jackson. That's about mm -hmm. all that I can remember. Um, that's you know, and I'm... Saying. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You know, not, not to interject and interrupt you, but... No, go ahead. That's the reason I'll be calling a whack a bitch. Okay. Because for him to say Nipsey ain't a legend... Blueface gonna have his funeral at Jackson fucking Memorial. <laughs> like all these platinum artists and shit, you know, because Wax, you know, Wax was running around on his like shit on Nipsey tour and shit. Yeah, like, oh, he ain't right. no legend. Y'all yeah. calling him a legend? Where's his platinum albums? Where's all his sales? Where's all this shit? Nigga, look at the look where his funeral was held at. Mm -hmm. Nigga, yo, your funeral going to be at a storefront church with 16 people there, nigga. <laughs> like, the only other motherfucker who had a funeral in the Staples Center was Michael Jackson. That's it. You know, like, this nigga had Stevie Wonder singing at his funeral. Your auntie going to sing at your funeral. That nigga's a legend. Mm -hmm. You know, like, fuck the white man statistics. Because that's what you're going off. You're going off white man numbers. Mm -hmm. Like, this motherfucker was a legend in and out the street. Yeah. This nigga was a, you know, like this nigga got murals all over the world. All over. Nigga. Man, listen, when I came out there, I came out there like a year and a half ago. Man, 
I mean, everywhere we went, we took a minute, kids took some pictures near uh, some Nipsey murals. I mean, like just and just regular like storefronts, not you know official places. I mean, like I was blown away at how many times I saw more Nipsey murals than I saw Kobe murals, and that's crazy to think. And that's what I'm saying, dog. Like for him to say he's not a legend, uh, like nigga. Number one, who the fuck are you to say that shit? You know, and number two, like, that's just flat out bullshit, nigga. Just the fact that there's murals of Nipsey all over the world. Nigga, your mama ain't even got a picture of you in her house, nigga. <laughs> like, who the fuck are you to say some shit like that? Like, don't nobody give a fuck about no punk ass whack 100. Like, I don't, I, I didn't like that shit. Like, I took that shit like personal, cuz. Understood. You know, I've already said, like, I'm going to stop speaking on game on my show because I'll probably run into that nigga. And it's not no fear thing. I, I'm i more scared for him than I am for me. Mm. But as far as, like, when it come to Nipsey, like, it's just, you know, like, if you heard, like, you heard the episode, nigga, that mm -hmm. shit was all emotion. That shit Very wasn't so. hella logical because, nigga, I said he was better than Tupac. Yep, In hindsight, it. I like him more than I like Tupac. But I'm not going to say he was greater than Tupac. Like, you know, if I had to, like, retract a statement from that episode, <laughs> yeah, nigga, I was, I was tripping. I, I got what you were saying. Because you, when you said it, it, there was context around it, though. You didn't yeah, just say like, it in a vacuum. Yeah, I didn't just throw it out. I didn't no, just no. spit it out my ass. But at the same time, when you look at Tupac's reach, it was a little more than Nipsey. Mm -hmm. Not that it was, like, not even a conversation because I honestly think it is. It is. You know, is. like Very if, much if so. motherfucker want to go back and forth. I can go back and forth with you about it. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, Nipsey's just weren't actual albums that were put out by record labels. Facts. But if you listen to these mixtapes and you compare them to a lot of niggas catalog, Nipsey has a better catalog than a lot of these niggas. Fuck whether or not a label put it out. Fuck whether or not Billboard counted that motherfucker. If I put Crenshaw against a lot of niggas' albums, it Man, is listen, better. Listen. It is better than a lot of niggas' albums. Because like I tell niggas, name somebody. I bet you I could put Nipsey catalog against Pusha T. I put his motherfucking catalog up against J. Cole, Kendrick, Game. You know, any of these niggas who y'all consider to be, you know, the greatest of our era. And he's comparable. Whether or not he's better, he's in that conversation mm -hmm. of the greatest of the era. Fuck whether or not an album, you know, because even with Lil Wayne, it's niggas who say Lil Wayne is the greatest rapper of all time. You're not going to tell me it ain't because of the mixtapes. Oh, of course, of course. But I, I wouldn't. And it's funny you mentioned that, man, because I, I, as I mentioned to you before we started recording, me and my man Eclectic, we recorded an episode for his podcast. It'll be out soon. Um, and we were talking about that billboard list that just came out of the top 50 uh, <laughs> rappers of all time. And they had Kendrick at number two. Um, and I love Kendrick, dog. I love him. I love what he stands for. I love his raps. I love his albums. I've been a fan since Section 80. That being said, I can't put Kendrick at number two. Not right now. I just can't. Like, I, I can't. Um and that came as, you know, and I mean, uh, Eclectic don't like Kendrick. Well, he I can't say he don't like Kendrick. He he doesn't listen to Kendrick's music, so he wouldn't have Kendrick at two anyway. But, you know, having Kendrick at two was high for me. But I think Lil Wayne was like at 11. So. Hey, how did they fucking mind? Yeah, I, I could think of, you know, I could think of a bunch of MCs that are better, you know, then who? Um, than Lil Wayne and Kendrick. Um no, yeah, I can. You can't. Lil Wayne is easily probably about. I'll give you top seven, but I'm not gonna give you ten. I guarantee. I, I can put Lil Wayne in the top fifteen. I can't put You're him crazy as fuck. You <laughs> please, please humor me. I can't. No, nah, man. I I mean, give me 10. Lil, Lil that, Wayne, that ain't I hard. That won't take long. Just give me I, ten. I can't give. He's not better than Jay. Not better than Nas, not better than Rakim, not better than nah. Karis One. He, 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 not wrong, better than Biggie. Wrong. Not better than uh Tupac. Not better than LL. Karis One, Scarface, Ice Cube. You want me to keep going? 
wrong, wrong. <laughs> See, this is a whole another podcast right here. <laughs> because it's like this, like, and and not to do white man numbers, mm-hmm. but if you look at the output that Lil Wayne had. Mm-hmm. At like 06, 07 little like oh, no mixtape question. Mix Wayne, like, yeah. He was crazy. That nigga was putting out classic fucking music at such a fucking clip that you can't not say he's better than these dudes who you honestly, dog. Like, how many songs? If if you did a versus battle of Lil Wayne and Rakim, Lil Wayne is getting Rakim. I mean, well, look, yeah, Rakim don't have Rakim ain't put out an album since like 2009 i don't give a fuck if you put rock him's whole catalog against lil wayne's catalog little wayne's catalog is better no Period. i'm not I, I well i here's what i'll say because i think rock him one you you're talking about two different eras but even if you compare wayne to his you contemporaries you got to stop making old nigga arguments <laughs> i'm an old nigga i gotta make old nigga no, arguments. you can't make oh you have like you got to put shit in context. You can't just old nigga your way through a lot of these I, I arguments. got to. I got to, though, Mike. That's what I do. Millie Mill. No, no, I can put Millie Mill up there. You no, know, Millie Mill. Like, Melly, come on. Melly, they put Millie Mill, I think, 49. I wouldn't have, I don't. I can't that say that I put me on the goddamn list. Shout exactly. out to what he did. I'm glad that you Facts. were instrumental in Facts. this thing that we talking about. Because without Facts. Millie Mill, we wouldn't be talking about this shit right now. Facts. Facts. But you got to put this shit in context. Like, if you put the catalogs against each other, take your feelings out of the shit. Because mm-hmm. like I said, I said what I said about Nipsey because of my feelings. Mm-hmm. But the point is, is the point. If I put Nipsey catalog against all these motherfuckers, he's very high. Fuck whether or not they sold just the music. It depends on the criteria, I- though. What's the criteria? That's that. Now, that's we got That's what we have to establish. But again, Wayne is top ten, no matter how you count it. Because if you put his catalog against any against all the hip hop acts that have ever done this shit, he's up here. You can't argue against the fact that he got more bangers than most of these motherfuckers. Because when that versus shit was cracking, I said, nigga. Nas and Lil Wayne is competition. Oh, it's definitely competition. It's definitely like, competition. So for the fact that he can go against Lil Wayne, there'd be a conversation. Obviously, he's in that. Oh yeah, no, no, no. I, I said I, Wayne. I said in, uh, on the when we recorded, I said last night. I said Wayne, where they had Wayne at. I think he was at, at like twelve or eleven, somewhere around there, uh, or thirteen. Um, I said Wayne a lot of people would have Wayne in the top 10. I said, and Lil Wayne, I think, and I've always said this, is one of the best rappers that we've seen, period. I said, I just don't, I said, when motivated, he's one of the best rappers we've seen. I said, I just don't know when he's motivated. Because when he's, when he was on his shit, he was on the shit, and he was on everybody's neck. But I mean, like, they got, they had Nicki Minaj at number 10. I mean, so. That was the fucking I think they just did that it's because popularity. she's so far past all the other women. Of course. That it's just like we, we gotta put her somewhere very high or we gonna get a lot of hate. So <laughs> for the, for Facts. The female vote, we gonna have to put her in this motherfucker up here. Facts. Because in no universe is she better than 90% of them niggas on that list. And I put her very high as far as like overall, mm-hmm. she top 20. But she for yeah. damn sure ain't motherfucking top 10. Nah, nah, but again, exactly. you hate no Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so is, in, in, in honesty, I don't count the bottom. I only count the top. Gotcha. You know, so let me, if I put a thousand songs out and 700 of them is whack, but 300 is fucking classics. I got 300 classics. Mm. So that's like that's like trying to count what a nigga put on a cutting room floor and say oh that nigga whack did you hear that song he didn't put out like no nigga that nigga got all these classic motherfucking songs he got literally classic mixtapes that's better than niggas albums so, so you gotta put him up there so where, all, where would you me. where would you where would you put andre 3000 if you had a if you had a dolomite top top 50 if does andre 3000 make your top yep. 50 where you, where, yep. you, where you think you put it just off the top of your head where you think you put him Eight. Wow. That high. Because, like, again, 
And this is this is the same as how I count for LeBron. I count people for their contribution. So some people are like, oh, he don't got no solo albums. Did you hear his verses? Just his verse. Fuck all of the oh, he was on Outcast and this was a feature. Did you hear his verse? Did you hear his verse on 30s, the new 20? That nigga wrapped circles around Jay-Z on 30s and New 20. That shit right there. Every time that nigga raps, yeah. he stands out. I don't give a fuck who he rapping with. He's standing out. That counts to me. Mm-hmm. Jada Kiss is probably way higher for me than he is for everybody else in the you, world. You know where he's on that list? Uh, 47. Bullshit. I know. Because again, I count my list is different than everybody else's list because same, my same. list is just like my my LeBron list. I count what you do. Fuck your team because <laughs> on your own team, you gonna be ranked wrong because it's a lot of motherfuckers that don't even remember how dope T Mac was because he never won no championship. Good point. The whole league was afraid of this nigga, but because he don't have no rings. We don't count him amongst the greatest two guards in the league where I have him probably top five, top three. Like, I got that nigga right after Jordan and fucking Kobe in the greatest two guards of all time. You put him over D-Wade? Yes. Okay. Hell, okay. he bust D-Wade motherfucking ass. Prime <laughs> T-Mac? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. He'll wear... <laughs> He put 40 on that motherfucker consistently. <laughs> D-Wade could not stand in front of motherfucking, what, 6'9", T-Mac? Yeah, who can six, do eight, everything, six, nine, yeah. Everything. everything. Yeah, right. T-Mac could destroy fucking D-Wade. It's not a lot of niggas who could stand in front of prime T-Mac. But because he ain't won no fucking championships and he didn't have all this <clears throat> success, we ain't realized this nigga was stepping on motherfuckers. So this is how I look at Andre 3000 because he was a member of Outkast. They don't really like to count him like he was really that nigga lyrically like he really was. Individually, Andre 3, it ain't a lot of niggas who could rap with him. Facts. So I got him top 10 easy. Yeah, they, I think they had they had Andre 3000 at 12. It's not unfair, but mm-hmm. I'd have him higher. You know, but like Kendrick, Kendrick don't really have no extra long ass career, but Biggie only got two fucking albums. Yeah. So it's like, how you going to put two album Biggie above all these other niggas who got like four or five motherfucking albums? So you, so Biggie's lack of body of work hurts him in that, in that sense. Yep. Okay. okay. Yeah. Cause like I tell niggas, I don't put Biggie in my top 10. Sorry. Not yeah. yeah he was, hater. I want to say he was six on their list. He was six and Pac was four. That's unfair to a lot of motherfuckers because longevity fucking counts. Like, how you going to say this nigga with two fucking albums better than me? But when Kendrick had two classic albums in a row, we couldn't say that yet. So (laughs) brains blown out. All of a sudden, now we're going to put Kendrick higher on the list because he got killed. Okay, so okay, so that that leads me to another question. Where would you put when we speak of it? Longevity, somebody like LL or Ice Cube. Um, Ice Cube. I love Cube. Cube's my top ten. Like I'm I biased would, though. And, and see, this is the thing. I would literally have to one day, like, really write it down. I, same here. Same here. You know, because I, I call telling King Germ that shit. Like, it. I don't like doing this sometimes because off the top of the head, I'd be like, oh, I got that nigga top this, and then when I actually write my list down, I'm like, oh shit, damn, I'm fifteen, shit, right? Because like, what? Ice Cube um, Death Certificate is one of my favorite albums of Same. all time. Same. Like A Bird in the Hand is one of my favorite songs in the world. I I could listen to that song all day for That's 24 cool. fucking hours and it bang the whole day. I love that shit. But I could probably name 10 niggas that I put ahead of Ice Cube on the list just because of Bodies of Work. Okay. Because Ice Cube got what? three classic albums and then four other debatable (laughs) albums Mm -hmm. you know because i I count your top 
Like everything yeah. comes into play with the shit, but I count like how many real like classic bangers do you really have as opposed to this motherfucker who probably had more. Mm-hmm. The reason that I put Jay Z so high, and like I told people, the reason that I consider Jay Z to be the greatest, not because he's been the hottest rapper, because in no part of his career was he ever the hottest rapper. No point in Jay Z's career has he ever been the hottest. Never, not one fucking iota. But he's always been in the conversation for fucking fifteen straight years. He been two and three, kind of like mm-hmm. LeBron. When 50 was up here, exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like when when I'm 50 fucking with you. was up here, Jay-Z was close. Mm-hmm. When uh Kanye was the hottest, Jay-Z was in the conversation. When Eminem was running it, Jay-Z was in the conversation. When Nelly was running it, Jay-Z was in the conversation. So Jay-Z's longevity in the conversation made him that. Same as LeBron. Like LeBron might not have led the league in scoring no year. But his ass was always top five the whole fucking career that he had. You can't count against that shit. Just like the MVPs. He might not have had the MVP, but he's been in the voting his whole career. <clears throat> he got more all NBA selections than Michael Jordan. Yeah, That's played, not bullshit. Played, That's real yeah. shit. But again, how you gonna count longevity <laughs> against them? I'm, I'm like best with saying, you. Oh, you only got 20 dope albums. Shit. <laughs> I, got, I got 10, but my 10 was better. Nigga, I got 20 dope ass albums. How you gonna count that against me? Man, like, listen. It's like E40 and too short. I have E40 super high. Mm-hmm. E40 got like 22 dope albums. Yeah. Fuck what the rest of the country think about E40, because you know he. He's dope to us. I think they had E40 in the... He was like 42 or something like that. I don't think Short made the list. They out of their motherfucking yeah. mind. Yeah, Short, Short's on my... He's, he's in my top 50. I, I got a spot for two Short. For a nigga to have a 30-year career now. <laughs> yeah. Like, 30 plus. The longest, the longest run of relevance in hip-hop is E40 and Too Short. That ain't bullshit. That ain't me just talking out of my... That's real. Mm-hmm. Who's been relevant longer than them? Because LL maybe is relevant. Well, LL LL had he didn't make the albums. Though. LL is not fucking relevant. You don't think LL is relevant? LL is a legend, but he's okay. not relevant. Okay. Because think about it. Put it in this context. If LL dropped the album right now, who's interested? Are your kids gonna say, "Hey, daddy, this is LL"? <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, we are gonna check that out, daddy. No, I'll check it out. Let, let us listen to that LL pops. No, but E forty, your kids know who E forty is. Yeah, they know E40. They know 40, 40 funds are really. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. Relevant. If your kids don't know, <laughs> LL got some music on the way. Yeah, they, they think uh relevant. they don't they they think uh Run is uh is Diggy's Diggy's dad. They don't know yeah, Run from exactly. they know Run from Run's house. They don't know Run. I mean they know Run DMC, but not like that. Same um, with Ice Cube. That nigga's known for Friday. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, when you tell niggas, oh no, this nigga will bite your favorite rapper's head off. They like you crazy. Tear him up. You talking about the nigga from Friday? No, I'm talking about the nigga you love to hate. <laughs> saying, like a, a lot of motherfuckers like us, we know mm-hmm. who these niggas is because we live through the era. Yes. But when I say relevant, I'm like, nigga, do your teenagers know who this motherfucker is for his rapping career? No. E-40 is known for his rapping still. Facts. 35, 40 years later, like Nigga, I, my first tape was in a major way. That's the first tape I bought with my own money. Mm. In a major way. That's my first tape that I bought. Wow. It's like, nigga, that nigga been relevant since I was in fucking elementary school. Yeah, I was. I think I was in high school. I'm like, yeah. I was like 12 mm. when I got that shit. Like, that's how I'm 40 fucking years old now. That's 28 damn years ago. Like, yeah. and that wasn't his first album. Nope. Like, nope. Nigga, I was I had heard Captain Save a Ho and VSOP yeah. and all like I heard a gang of shit before that. So break on me, go all the way back my freshman year. Thirty years of relevance, too short. Thirty plus years of relevance because mm-hmm. too short was around longer than forty was. Yeah, I want to say short came out with 87, 87, I think. Yeah, exactly. I think it was eighty seven. Exactly. All these years of re- you can't be. Oh well, we're gonna put you way down. And nigga, no, mm. longevity is is for you, not against you. 
Mm-hmm. So like I said, nigga, you not finna tell me all oh, LeBron played twenty years. <laughs> yes, nigga, it counts. That's good. You can't say oh, I twenty years. No, nigga, twenty is a plus, not a minus. So Man. I got forty and fucking too short, high as hell on the motherfucking list. Fuck it, because you know I, you can count against too short because he did rap very elementary, but it worked for this guy. No, it, it worked. It so worked. I mean, it, it, and it, he was successful with it. No, I ain't, yeah. I ain't knocking short at all. Yeah, and I got Tupac number two because another stat that I weigh very highly is impact. He's the most influential artist and in probably music. Fuck hip hop, music in general. Who's mm-hmm. more influential? What? How many? Who's gonna be an artist that people are gonna say I was influenced by this motherfucker? Yeah. Name Tup- a rapper who didn't say they was influenced by Tupac. Tupac Damn, has a tree. Tupac. Who just coming out now? He has a tree, and there's so many branches off that tree, it's ridiculous. Exactly. Even to this day. Exactly. Because as great as Jay Z was, as great as his career is, as great as he is lyrically, it's not a lot of motherfuckers that's going to say, oh, Jay Z was my influence. It is, as far as the lyricists, mm-hmm. but everybody else, whether it's a mumble rapper, a, a, a bar rapper, a backpack rapper, Tupac, 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 Tupac. He's the most influential out of all these motherfuckers. Whether you like him or dislike him, you can't deny the influence. You can't deny the impact. Mm. There so you go. I got him high. There you go. Man, this has been fun. This has been fun. Before we get out of here, man, Dolomite, tell folks where they can catch you at. Tell them about the podcast and everything, where they can hit you up on social. Uh, social media, Instagram and Twitter at Uncle Dolomite or Too Much Game Podcast on Instagram, Too Much Game Pod on Twitter. The Twitter, I don't be tweeting from that motherfucker too much, so don't expect no whole lot. <laughs> uh, YouTube, Too Much Game Podcast. I'm on all streaming platforms, Too Much Game, T O O Much Game, not number two, because I ain't number two of shit. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, I just be talking shit. It's it's a philosophy show. I done spent four years. Tomorrow is gonna be the four year anniversary of the Stop. Two Game Podcast. That's what's up. Happy anniversary, bro. Man, I and I, I I never knew what kind of show it was. Like I'm like I don't know if it's an advice show. I don't know if it's a self help show. I don't know if it's motivational. It's a little it's, bit of everything, to be honest. It's my philosophy. That's what I'm gonna call it. It's a philosophy show. Because Mm -hmm. whether you agree or not, because sometimes I'm going to say some shit that I just know you're not going to agree with. You're going to disagree. If you agree with everything I say, you a fucking sheep. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't agree with everything I say. Because in my eyes, everything I say is right. I don't say nothing because I think it's wrong. I say it because I think it's right. But no two people can agree on everything. So it's going to be some shit I'm going to say that you don't agree with. But I just want to put some shit on your mind. So that's what the show is. 1,000%. 1,000%. I mean, you know, he said LeBron is the GOAT, and I disagree, but I had to have him on here because he got a dope-ass podcast, man, and, and I got, um when Jern put me on, but I got hooked. I was like, man, who is it? Because it's so much reminds me of what I was doing, too, and I think, like, one of the first episodes I listened to, you was like, man, this is just a freestyle. And I was like, shit, that's what it's supposed to be. You know, like, you was like, I ain't got no notes. I'm just talking. And I was amazed by how the fact that you just sat there and just talked for an hour and no breaks no nothing and you and his shit is live so it's like i was watching on i think it was ig i was watching it live on ig and i was like okay this shit is dope and um you know just got hooked man and um so you guys check him out follow him hit him up on uh on social media um you know where to find this podcast the 12 kyle podcast drops every thursday at midnight uh from time to time we drop bonus episodes on sundays uh, this has been a great episode. Dolomite again, brother. Thank you for coming through. Uh, this would not be the last time because this brother talks shit and I love having him on. Um, I'm glad I didn't have Jerm on because y'all would have double teamed me on this one. Um, <laughs> that was enough. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, that's going to do it for us. So for my man Dolomite, I am your boy 12Kyle. We'll catch you guys next time. Five G's.